In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to modify your radon fan and make it smart so that number one, it won't ever be left off forever. And number two, you can tell if it's not working when it's supposed to be. Coming up. That radon fan is just so annoying right here on my patio. Everybody is always just tempted to turn it off. And then they leave it off and we forget about it. And that's not good. The other issue is the only way to know if it's working or not is to have access to this little gauge on here that shows that it has negative pressure inside that pipe. So this is the little device that I'm gonna to use to make this happen. This is called a Shelly 1PM Plus. This is a power metering relay. Now it's a smart device, which means it's internet connected or you can control it locally depending upon you know what you've got in your house. But uh, this, the best thing about this is that it is a power monitoring device, which means it can tell me if that fan goes off or if it starts using more power than it normally does. And in both cases, I can take action. Now they make these in a form factor that work universally around the world. So this is a 110 to 240 volt device. Here you see L, which is for line. There's three screws for line and two screws for neutral. Okay, line, neutral. Then there's this switch connector, that's the SW. And then there's the O, which is for the output. And you can see that symbol is for load. So between the neutral and the output, that's where you get your load. So that's where the fan's gonna be connected to. So for power, I've got this extension cord that I cut the ends off and I'm just gonna use, this is um, you know, simulating the wires that you would find in your wall switch, but this is the hot and the white one is the neutral. So line and neutral. All right, so that's gonna provide my power connection. Now to test the output, I'm gonna use a light bulb and I've got some very short wires here. Just, these are lightweight. This is not gonna be a high current use situation. Okay, now what I've done is I've connected the light and I have the white wire here is the neutral and the non-white wire is the hot. So that's this one here. So this way you'll be able to see when the relay is on and when it's off. Okay, these are all the connections for my test. So the wall switch will control this output as well but it'll monitor power here and I can control it from this too. So now I'm gonna plug it in and hopefully no smoke. But my switch makes this click. So even if it's not set up, it still works. Now to set it up, I'm gonna go to, I can either scan this QR code or just go to Shelly.cloud. Since this was the first Shelly device I've owned, I needed to install the Shelly Smart Control app, allow notifications, and create an account before I could set up my new device. My 1PM relay was immediately discovered and I added it to my special IoT network, which is isolated from the rest of my trusted devices in the house. I named the device Radon Fan and I verified that I can control it from the app as well as see the voltage and the power consumption of the light bulb. Next, I headed to the Settings tab, and under the Input-Output settings, I set the switch mode to be an edge switch, which means the fan will be toggled whenever the switch is flipped, regardless of whether the switch is on or off. So the switch could be flipped off, and it still would turn the fan on, and vice versa. I also set the relay to turn on by default after a power failure. That's important because, of course, you want the radon fan to be running all the time. To get the fan to automatically turn back on, I went to the timer tab in the Shelly app and enabled auto on. For my initial test, this was 10 seconds, but here it's set to 7200 seconds, which is two hours. The beauty of Shelly devices is that the timer functionality runs locally on the device. It doesn't depend on the cloud or any other home automation servers like Home Assistant. It's really a fail safe solution. All right, with the breaker off, I'm ready to open up this switch. And you can see this switch is very easy. It's convenient for somebody to turn it off. And if they turn it off by accident and forget about turning it back on, I wanna be able to control that with an automation. So that's gonna be a really cool thing about this. 
All right, I have it open and you can see that it's very simple on the inside. All it has is a switch and uh, the one side, this side here, is the hot coming in from the wall. And then the other side is the stranded wire. That one goes to the fan. And these are just the neutrals that are connected to each other and the ground. That's it. It's really pretty straightforward. Now, I don't want to put in these stranded wires. They're, they're a little too fat to put into the, the Shelly. So what I've done is I've created some pigtails here and I'm going to join them together. You can see this is a Wago connector. So I'm going to use that one for the neutral and I'm going to this is for the O, the output. I'm going to pigtail that with the, the other one that goes to the fan. The one that comes in on the line, that one is a strand, you know, single solid wire so that I can put that in here. That's not going to be a problem. So let me get it hooked up. I'll show you how it looks. Okay, I've pretty much got it configured exactly the same way as it was in my test in the office. You can see all the white wires are under this Wago connector. So they're pigtailed all together and they're brought over to the Shelly right here. The line comes in from the wall that comes in here. The other side of the line goes to the switch. And on the other end, that wire comes back to the SW connector. And then the O terminal gets connected to this Wago, which then goes to the fan. So now I'm ready to turn on the breaker and let's give it a test. Now, the way I've configured it, I made it so that it should go on automatically as soon as the power goes back on. So when I walk outside, that fan better be running. And it is. Excellent. Now let's see if I flip the switch. That turns it off. But now I can use an automation to say if this is off for too long, turn it back on. And that way, we don't ever forget about turning it back on. All right, now I got everything pushed back in here and I'm showing this because people often ask me, you know, how do you fit the wires in and, and these kind of devices? So you can see the Shelly fits very nicely tucked in there next to the switch and um, no problems whatsoever. And the rest of the wires, I just curl them up. I make sure that the ground wires are far away from the side where the hot wires are and um, it shouldn't be a problem at all. And I also, I know it's a metal box. I've got pretty strong Wi-Fi signal out here, so it shouldn't be a problem getting my Wi-Fi. And I don't know if you noticed, but in the beginning, this is the way this box was installed. And that's actually backwards. It's supposed to be like this. The weather stripping is supposed to be against the back. So somebody really screwed that up, that's for sure. All right, just to test this out, I'm gonna turn this off. Now, in case somebody turns it off because it's too noisy and they want to have a conversation, I have it set in test mode so that it'll just come back on after 10 seconds. And there it is. So now I can change that to, let's say, two hours or whatever. And that way I know they can turn it off to sit out on the patio and, uh, and it'll go back on automatically. Here you can see when running, my radon fan uses around 128 watts of power. To be notified if the fan stops working, I initially set up a scene in the Shelly app that I called Radon Fan Monitor. This scene detects if the fan's power consumption falls below 100 watts, for example, and I immediately get a notification on my phone. This is what that notification looks like. The problem is, I get notified even if someone intentionally turns off the switch, plus I only get notified once. So I came up with a better approach that will notify me every hour if the device says the fan should be on, but the power is less than 120 watts. That way I won't get notified if we wanted it off, and I'll get notified repeatedly if it's off when it should be on. So that's cool functionality directly through the Shelly app. So you can use your Shelly devices directly from the Shelly app, but if you have a home automation hub in your house, like I have Home Assistant here, you can also integrate it with that. It works really well. So I'm just gonna go into settings and into integrations. And immediately you're gonna see right here, it says uh, it found my Shelly device. So here I'm gonna configure my Shelly device. And it knows the IP address. Now I've also gone into my router and I've made that a static IP address, so it's not gonna change. I'm just gonna say this is outside. 
And that's how easy that was. Shelly, right here, one device. All right, now here you can see that little switch and I can control it directly from Home Assistant. In addition, I can also see the energy usage. Now with the switch on, you can see the light is consuming 9.7 watts of electricity. And this will keep track of how many kilowatt hours. I guess over time, I'm not exactly sure. This is the first time I'm actually using this device. But the good thing is, it'll tell me how much power it's using. So what I'll do is I'll monitor this for a little while, and then I can create a rule that says if the power falls below a certain level, or above a certain level, anything out of the ordinary, I can have it alert me. So what do you think about my automation with the radon fan? Let me know if you find it useful. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid.